is sweeter, more wonderful, greatest man who's ever lived, changed the world, changed our lives. Lord, on one hand, I say I wish he could be here with us tonight. On the other hand, I'm taking him at his word that he is. Because we have a group of people here tonight who, has, who have, among us, met the requirement. You said you'd be among us, Lord Jesus, if two or three would be gathered in your name. That's not just a head count, though. I understand that. I understand, Lord, that that's about our hearts. So if among this group tonight, which is two or three many times over, there are two or three among us who are not here for the fun of it, not here to be seen or be counted, but here in the name of Jesus, seeking your face, and I know there are, then Lord, we're taking you at your word tonight that you are here among us. I pray that you'd be honored and glorified. Lord Jesus, I pray as you hear and see what's done in the next little bit and, and, and even what's been done already, that at the close of the service that you would say, that is why I died on the cross. That is why I came to earth. That is why I started the church so that people all over, all over the world would have the opportunity to do what these folks did tonight. Lord Jesus, may you be honored and pleased by our gathering. We love you. Bless your word, I pray. In Christ's name, amen. 1 Corinthians 14, 12 is a verse that preaches on its own. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. And you say, well, great. If it preaches all on its own, let me go home. You don't need to, you don't need to say anything else. Well, I, I, I do want to at least make it stick in your mind. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Now, seek means... You're making an effort. You are trying. Okay? Excel. Do you hear the word excellent? <laughs> Excel is, a, is uh, the root word of the word excellent. So set out to become excellent at something. What is that something? At the edi to the edifying. What is edify? Well, do you hear the word edifice in there? Edifice, an edifice is a building. So to edify is to build. So set out to become excellent at building the church. Now, is that talking about my local church or is that talking about the spiritual body of Christ. And I believe it applies to both, but in this context, it's most directly talking about their local church in Corinth. And the fact is, if you if don't think that you're going to edify the worldwide body of Christ if you don't first do it in the local church that you belong to. It is an unscriptural mistake for any Christian to get his or her eyes on the whole worldwide church without first focusing on their local church. And by the way, to even try to interact with the spiritual body of Christ without being a member of a local church, that's a joke. So, Yes, I believe it has application to both, but it begins with the church that you belong to. Hey, the Apostle Paul started many churches, but in between every, every trip, where did he go? Back to his home church in Antioch. Why? Because he belonged to that church. And he went back and he reported to them. So, yes, it has application to 
the body of Christ as a whole, including all believers. But clearly, Paul was telling these people, you need to do it at Corinth first. Before you edify, go to the, go to the title screen if you would please. Thank you. Before you try to edify all believers, how many spiritual pipsqueaks have I seen in my lifetime that tried to, tried to evangelize the whole world, but they didn't do squat in their own church? And by the way, their ministry never got off the ground because everything starts at the church you belong to. And if you don't belong to a church, you haven't started yet. And you say, why are you getting hot under the collar back? Because the, the modern, a lot of the modern heresy is wrapped up in people that say, I don't have to belong to a local church. I am the church. That's bogus, unscriptural nonsense. Hey, as a believer, you do make up the church. And, but you, as, as a baptized in water believer, you are to be a member of a local church. <laughs> Let's move on. That's not the message tonight. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Set out. Make it your goal, your purpose, to become excellent at strengthening your church. Man, there's, there's a missing element in, in Christianity today, isn't it? We want to we wanna be served. We're served everywhere else. You know, you don't go to a restaurant and sit down and say, how can I make this place better? You know, you don't go to the doctor's office and sit in the waiting room thinking, how can I make this place better? No, every place we go, we're there for them to make us better, for them to feed, feed us a good meal, for them, whatever it is. And if they don't, we're going to see the manager. We're going to complain because that's where we're at in this world. But when we come to church, there's something different. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Every believer should have the desire to strengthen his church. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Make the strengthening of your church a priority in your life. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Use your gifts to strengthen your church. That's the immediate context there. He's saying you're boasting about all these gifts, all these spiritual gifts. Your church should be stronger, not weaker. And if they had focused on excelling to the edification of their church, it would have solved all the bickering over spiritual gifts. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Work at getting good at strengthening your church. Are you good at strengthening your church? By the way, most of what I say tonight, you already do to some degree. <coughs> but it doesn't mean that we don't need to hear it. I need to hear it first. We need to hear these things and grow and, and get better at them. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Strive to strengthen your church by becoming stronger yourself. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Strive to strengthen every person in your church. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Work at making your church as a whole stronger. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Work at strengthening every person who shows up every time you show up. Man, there'd be a, there'd be a great wolf rule for us to follow. I want to strengthen everybody who shows up every time I show up. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. See strengthening your church as your personal responsibility. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Man, I, I said in Sunday school this morning, 
if you weren't in my class, I'll repeat it. You know, Amy and I go on these trips, and we come back, and we tell, we tell the good stuff. We tell the happy stuff and very little of the negative stuff. But understand, not only do negative things happen on every single trip, but we hear negatives on every trip. We hear, you, you go to a church, and part of what you learn is there's troublemakers there, or, or they're having financial problems, or, or this or that. I don't, I don't drag those things back. Those are things I pray about and things that I keep to myself. But you always hear in, in, in your Christian life, if, you, if you've been uh, living for the Lord for any time, you know good and well as you interact with Christians, you hear people complain about their church. Our church isn't friendly. Well, will you take it as your personal responsibility to fix that? Seek that she may excel to the edifying of your church. Our church is dead. People don't sing out. Well, will you take it as your personal responsibility to fix that? Seek that she may excel to the edifying of the church. Nobody in our church does anything. Well, you do something. Take it as your personal responsibility. Seek that she may excel to the edifying of the of the church. It's so funny how the I am the church people, you can't find them when it's time to do something. They just want to use that as their excuse to do nothing, which makes no sense. Seek that you may excel to the edifying of your church. Ask yourself, what can I do to strengthen my church? And if you say, yeah, that's a good question. Well, good, because I got 12 answers for you. And each answer is one word. And they're very simple. Let me give you 12 words that will and I don't usually recommend you write stuff down, but maybe write these words down. This isn't all you can do, but these are 12 things you could do to edify your church, to make your church stronger. Number one, prepare. Prepare. You know one big reason that we have PowerPoints at every service? Because when you see that, you know somebody prepared. Now, I've been in many church services in my lifetime, and I've been in hundreds of different churches, so I'm, I, but I've been in many church services in my lifetime where it was clear nobody prepared or somebody didn't prepare. And... It bothers me. Yeah, I, I would sit, I'll sit in a service like that and I'll go, why did I come if the person in charge didn't prepare? They say, well, what am I supposed to prepare for, for a church? I'm not running the service. You are to prepare your heart. You know, Brother Joey stands up and leads us enthusiastically and he's wrapped up and, and uh, ready to go. And his leadership of the songs moves us. But wouldn't it be great if you didn't need someone else to move you? You could just jump right in. You know, somebody sings a special and you go, woo! That, wow, I didn't think I could do that. I thought I was going to come out all raspy. So let me try it again. Woo! Yeah! All right. Maybe I should just preach like that! But anyway. Um, you. <laughs> did I mess up your uh, hearing aid? Sorry, Reggie. <laughs> um. But uh, I distracted myself, totally lost my way. Um, uh, prepare, prepare your heart, huh? Your own heart, yeah. What else did I, was I going to say? Okay, the special. What else was I going to say? Oh, yeah, you hear a special. Somebody sings a song, and you go, man, that's great. I, man, I'm ready now. What if you were that ready when you walked in the door? So that you could be a blessing to every person in the room before, before the service even began. Prepare. Prepare. Now, I'm, I'm, not, um, I'm not saying that you need to prepare like the pastor prepares. I'm not saying you need to prepare to the extent that the choir prepares. But you ought to come to church spiritually prepared. Hey, don't we have the hope and the expectation that at every service... Someone might show up who doesn't know the Lord. 
Don't you think you might want to be more prepared to seek the Lord than, than that person is? Yeah, of course you do. And I don't even think I have to tell you how to prepare. How about just seek the Lord on Sunday morning? How about just <coughs> have a routine on Sunday morning? I've got a routine every day that gets me seeking the Lord, and I won't go through it. But Sunday morning's a little different. I have a playlist that I really only ever use on Sunday morning. I've used it for years. My wife is so sick of it, but that's okay because it helps me. She's uh, helping her. That's up to her, right? But anyway, but by the way, if you've ever read my wife's Sunday morning post on Facebook, that's, that's what that was rooted in. How many years now? Ten years? I don't know. More than that, maybe. She started making that post because she wanted to come to church with a prepared heart, and she thought, well, if, it, if this prepares my heart, let, it, let me share it with other people. And I mean, that thing gets read by, by thousands of people. And uh, I mean, w when I travel and somebody meets me, oh, you're the guy that's married to the woman that makes that post on Facebook. On so yeah, that's me. That's why I live. But anyway, uh, but, but she started that preparing her heart. What do you do to prepare your heart to come to church, prepare. Now, all the points are not as as uh, long as that one is, but prepare. Second word, welcome. Welcome. You don't have to be an official greeter to welcome people. And I'm not just talking about welcoming strangers. How about welcoming everybody who arrives after you do? How about letting... Everyone who walks in the door, whether you recognize them or not, know that you're glad to see them. You know, when, when people go to a, a church and they go away saying, well, that wasn't a very friendly church, they're not talking about the official greeter at the door. And they're also not talking about people who are glaring at them and insulting them. When they say that's not a very friendly church, they're not, they don't mean that they encountered some specific negative. They're saying that they did not encounter the positive that they had hoped to encounter. People reaching out to them. And I don't mean, listen, let me make this clear. We don't have a church where men hug women and women hug men that they're not married to or that they're not related to. That's dangerous stuff. And praise the Lord, that may be why after 20 year, 28 years, we have yet to have, and by God's grace, we have yet to have a, uh, an adulterous affair within our church. We've had folks leave and go do it elsewhere, but... We've not had it in our midst. Praise God for that. And it may be, you know, we've had people over the years, just a couple, that, uh, you know, some guy, well, I just want to welcome everybody. Yeah, he wanted to hug all the women. Yeah, we can all see right through that, man. We know what you're about. And so we don't have that here. And I, I, I you say, well, in some cultures, that's great. You know, you know how to know somebody really means it? <laughs> Man, if you ever get the chance to, to uh, meet Pastor Dominic Petticetti, he will hug you and kiss you. And that's how you know somebody, you know, people say, greet the brethren with a holy kiss. When a man kisses another man on the cheek or on, on the neck, uh, then you know that he's trying to obey scripture. But when a man wants to use that as an excuse to embrace every woman and every teenage girl, he's got something wrong. So we don't do that here. But when I'm saying reaching out, by the way, man, it wouldn't hurt for you to embrace another man, another man just to welcome him and, and let him know that you care about him. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome the people in your own age group. Welcome the people who are... You, who, they are who you are, and they want to find out. They want to find out if there are other people in his or her age group that not only love the Lord but will interact with me. Welcome. 
When I say embrace, I mean uh, emotionally embrace. Embrace with your personality. Make sure they know you're pulling them in. Prepare, welcome, compliment. Compliment. And, and not, not flatter. Compliment. Look for something to compliment people on. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Fourth word, intercede. Intercede. Make it your ministry to intercede for other people. Write down prayer requests and then actually pray for those people. Intercede. Number five, encourage. Encourage. Make it your goal <clears throat> to help someone feel better about, to give them hope, to make them feel better about today, about tomorrow, about the future. How? I don't know. There's all kinds of ways. If you're trying to encourage somebody, you will find a way. Participate. Participate. You know, you know, one of the signs of anything that's dead is when you uh, try to get something going and no one will volunteer, no one will participate. You know what? When it's testimony time, I can count on it. Brother Freddie has a testimony to give. You know what that does? That primes the pump. And that's why I make fun a lot of times at the atmosphere because I'm just, I'm being honest with you. That's the climate I grew up in church. <laughs> testimony time, it was like, all right, who wants to have a root canal? You know what I mean? And <laughs> who, has a, who has something you want to say for the Lord? Silence. Man, that should not be the climate in a church. So participate. Participate. Next. About, let me say along those lines. I praise the Lord that when it's time to do a college student care pack, I make it that list and I look at it and I go, oh man, we're never going to fill all these spaces. And then I sit up here and they fill up so quickly. Hands go up and I'll do all three of those. And man, that's wonderful. That's participation. So I'm saying again tonight, I'm not trying to convince you to do something you're not doing, but we all need to hear. We all need to be reminded that we should seek that we may excel to the edifying of the church. And uh, Jalen, is that you in the PA booth? Very good. Because I was getting ready to preach, and I said, oh, man, Jalen's not here. And then uh, I'm going a little further, and I'm going, wow, Brian's hair's gotten long. And uh, <laughs> then finally on my third try, I got it right. Participate. Next, connect. Connect. Find ways to connect with people your gender, and here there's only two because there's only ever been two, your gender, your age group. Strive to connect, to reach out. Listen, you may think, and I, I am not, but you may think that I'm the most wonderful preacher in the world. Nobody comes to church for the preaching. People come to church because they connect with other people. Strive to connect. And I mean strive to connect with the people already in the church. Well, they're, they're not my kind of person. Uh, are you saved? Are they saved? They're your kind of person. That's all you need. Hey, me and Brother Corky connect well, and he's a Mets fan. You know, I've had good Christian connections with Red Sox fans. I can't even believe that, but I have. You may not, you may not like all the same things. You may not agree on everything, but if he's a believer and you're a believer, you can connect. But then if someone shows up at church who doesn't know Jesus Christ, you need to connect with them to draw them to Christ. Connect. Next word, grow. Grow. Because as you grow, the church grows. As you become stronger, the church becomes stronger. Your personal spiritual growth is the growth of the church. Grow. Grow. Next word, 
thank. Thank people. Hey, thank people. Would it, would it, would it be out of line to thank someone for something they do every Sunday? Hey, thank Brother Fred. You have no idea how much time he puts in keeping us financially sound. It's hard work. And he puts a lot of hours in. It ought to be a paid position. The least we could do is thank him, right? Could you, could you thank the, the choir director? Could you thank the choir members? Could you make it a point to thank the person who sings a special on any given Sunday, any given service? You say, well, are you saying we're not thankful? No, I'm telling you how. Seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. And thanking people is one of the ways that we can do that. Contribute. Now, contribute, you know, right away we think contributions, money, he's yelling about money. First of all, I'm not yelling. Number two, no, I'm not talking about money. I, I'm including money. That's part of contribute. But <clears throat> there's a song that says, by and by when I look on his face, I will wish I had given him more. We all will. We will all wish that we had given more of our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. We will wish that we had been contributors and not observers. That's going to be our great, in a nutshell, that's going to be our great regret. That we, that we were not more contributors to the Lord's cause, that we were just observers. We watched other people do stuff. Every effort. Now look, when you want to contribute to everything, there comes a point where you reach your limit. You say, I don't think I can give another thing. But very few Christians live at that place. Contribute. Seek that ye may excel to the edification, to the edifying of the church. Serve. I believe that's word number 11, but my, if my count is correct, serve. Now, I'm not talking about doing a job in the church, although that is serving. I'm talking about being a servant. What can I do to help you? What was that phrase they said? We were in Texas. We were in Texas almost a year ago. And every man in the church and every man that worked for the man that uh, owned the ranch said he asked the same. They asked the same. Every time they would walk by you, they would ask you, what was that question? Something like, what can, I, what can I do to help you? Or what do you need? What can I get for you? Something like that. Every time. It was, it was so consistent that you knew somebody had been training them. What can I get you? What can I get for you? What, so, 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 that's the question that a servant asks. We're very privileged on um, Monday and Tuesday night, not only to be around Pastor Wilkerson, but Pastor Wilkerson had brought uh, some people, a few people had also come to the meeting from First Baptist Church, and one of them was, was Rebecca's dad. And uh, after the service, we were getting ready to go, and uh, we were parked the equivalent distant-wise from, I would say, from the front door out into the field. That's about how far away the, the parking was. And so uh, we, were, we were saying goodbye, and I was saying goodbye to, to Brother Ruck, and that suddenly he, it dawned on him, oh, he's got to walk way out there to, to the parking lot. So uh, my wife was still wrapped up in a conversation over here, so Brother Ruck said, he said, uh, he said, can I have your keys? He said, I'll go get the truck and bring it up to the front door. And uh, I hesitated because I couldn't remember if she left the rock station on the radio. But anyway, I'm just kidding. <laughs> In fact, when he actually pulled up, I said, my wife didn't leave the country station on, did she? And he goes, your wife? <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> but no, it's, it's never on there. I'm, just to be clear, I'm joking. But um, can I go get the truck? I said, sure, man, I would love that. That would be great. Thank you very much. He had no reason to do that. He wasn't there to be a help to me. That wasn't his responsibility, but he's used to serving. And, I, man, I, uh, as he's walking away, I'm thinking, Lord, help me to be like that. 
Help me to have a heart that just wants to serve, that just wants to say, what can I, what can I help you with? And, you know, it's, uh, when you can't walk, it's, it's a challenge because you can't always do everything people need you to do. But there's other things I can do. I can do stuff sitting down. And I, I want to have a heart of a servant. Serve. And the last word, praise. Praise. And I'm talking about praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord. You know, a person who lives a life of praising God, they light up the auditorium when they walk in. And I, and I don't even mean that, you know, they walk in, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I, I'm talking about a praiser has a glow on their face. Man, you've heard me talk about this lady before. Um, but uh, the, the Second Camp Baptist Church, that was a building that I was trying to get uh, before the Lord brought us together here in, in Danbury. But uh, that didn't work out. Um, and, and I'm glad it didn't. It, it was not of God. But, but the, it was pastored when I was a kid by a man named Wayne Morrison. And his mom, Mrs. Morrison, was a godly woman who just every other word out of her mouth was praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. And she had a glow. And she, so she didn't, she wasn't a member of Patterson Baptist Church. I don't know where she went on Sunday morning, but sometimes on Sunday night she'd come to church at Patterson Baptist Church. And I'm telling you, when she was in the service, it was a different service. And I don't mean she made a scene. She wasn't loud. She didn't make noise. You just knew she was there. She had a presence about her because she lived praising the Lord. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. How do you do that? Here's 12 ways that you can do that. And these are real things. This isn't me sitting down saying, I need 12 points. No, these are real things. And if one out of five people in the room began to go after these, just one out of five people began to go after these things, it would transform our church. Now, you already do a bunch of these. A bunch of you already do a bunch of these things. But there's something different about doing something but, but then saying, I'm going to go after this in a way I never had before. By the way, I bet none of us is 12 for 12. So pick something you're not going after. And say, you know, I, I'm not really careful about that. I'm going to go after that. And if just 20% of us pick something that we're not going after and begin to go after it, <coughs> It would edify the people of our church and it would edify our church as a whole. Prepare, welcome, compliment, intercede, encourage, participate, connect, grow, thank, contribute, serve, and praise. Now, I didn't number these, so if I didn't hit 12, I messed up somewhere, but I think there's 12 there. I got to know before I pray. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes, okay. These are the things that keep me up at night when I don't check, double check and make sure that everything is right. Do you know that I can't, if I get a cup of coffee at, my, at uh, Dunkin' Donuts and the, the mouthpiece of the lid is over that place that where the cup comes together, that joint, I can't drink it. That's crazy, isn't it? I take the little, I've spilled many a coffee doing this, but I have to do it. And I turn that line back to where it lines up with the lines of my, you know, the, the, where my knuckles are so that I can grab, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. You got crazy stuff too. Do you know if I'm going to put butter on a, on a roll and I pull that roll apart and I butter the roll, the top has to fit back onto the bottom exactly the way I took it off. I can't take it off, turn it, put it on. Oh, no. Uh -uh. I can't eat that roll. Yeah. You're crazy, too. Just different stuff. All right? Anyway, so, yeah, I had to count the list, make sure I really had 12. Otherwise, you're going home. You, you would go home and say, now, I hear another thing I said, just, there weren't 12. There weren't 12. There was 11. There weren't 12. Anyway, had to check. Father.
Help us tonight, please. Help me tonight to seek to excel to the edifying of the church. Lord, on Sunday mornings we pray for revival and we pray for revival to begin in the church. Lord, this would be a great place for us to begin. Or, or I'm not implying that we haven't begun to seek, but Lord, this would be a great place for us to continue to seek to excel to the edifying of our church. Oh, God, please, God, please help us to, to make it our goal to strengthen the people in our church and to strengthen our church in a whole. Please, God, I pray. I pray. Please work and bless tonight. In Christ's name, amen.